Hey guys, thank you for joining us today on this Monday, this beautiful Monday. I'm going to be again interviewing Crypto Eddie, making the most of having Crypto Eddie. Yeah? Hello guys. And then um, we're going to be having a conversation between me and Eddie, and we're going to talk about um, freedom, crypto, um, and where we see that going, and where the change is. So, and even even the government as well. So, Eddie, I want to be able to speak to you. What do you think the world would have been like had there not been any crypto? from a personal point of view and also from a governmental point of view. Had there not been such a thing as the Bitcoin, would the government have had it in the bag? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we know what is financial situation of the world is right now. And we know at, at this time of the yes, we have a financial crash. But it's the case that, I mean, what, what I was seeing zero percent interest uh, rate. Yeah. So, I mean, you know what the story is. Um, it can be really interest. That's how private the economy is right now. So, I mean, so, I think it takes time, really. And so, what, what, what I say is that, had the Bitcoin had not become now, what would have been the government's position had they not been a Bitcoin? Would they be party in government right now? Because this is the head that we would have there not. I'm not necessarily a party. I'm not necessarily a party. I'm not necessarily a party. I'm not They've all kept us in this situation, but they are into the control of um, the way the market comes about. The inflation will just come out and nobody will be talking about uh, any sort of, you know, changing the. Uh, the structure, the way it is now, for, for some reason. Uh, speak a bit, I don't know whether the mic catch speak your okay. yeah. speak more. Yeah, so for some reason, it's coming to one. I think what they're saying, you know, what we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, I see, yeah, it's, it, it's funny how we picked up in this, um, um, that kind of, you know, almost the entire uh, time, you know, uh, of mankind. Um, so I think now it's the time that people are uh, waiting. They've been waiting. What's it like? What's it like? At the time, I was quite young, um, in 2007, when we had the banking crisis, and this was private Bitcoin, and we saw what the government was capable of. It bailed out, it bailed out so many banks using taxpayers' money. A lot of people were really upset with the fact that they were being because the money was used to bail banks out. Well, the, 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 thing, the thing about the, the 2007, uh, uh, 2008 financial crisis, um, it's, it's, I think that is when everyone... Um, um, Became aware of how manipulative the 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 the, uh, the fiat system is um, because don't forget this is the time that um, the masses actually realized. How use, did you feel about it? Um, the, the the use of um, internet really. So I mean there was a lot more awareness you see um, when it happened. When it happened. So this is what brought the change. So we have to start to understand how we came about this much desire, desired change. Is because we, you know, information became very, very um, readily available um, in terms of social media. Just start, it just you know started to pick up. Um, uh, smartphones just started to pick up as well. So p right. information went around faster than um, um, in the 80s, 90s. You know, where you'd have to read papers and listen to the news. You know, produced by the government. You know, so. Um, and how do you feel about the fact it was, Go it was Gordon Brown who was the chancellor at the time, who literally said we're going to use Keynesian economics um, to prime the pump and we're going to release a whole lot of liquidity into the marketplace and we're going to start quantitative easing. We're basically just going to flood and you mentioned the interest rate, but it was Gordon Brown who, who actually brought that back into fashion again, um, Keynesian views of how to, um, Keynes, Keynes view, Maynard, John Maynard Keynes, Keynes's view of priming the pump and spending money to create animal spirit and to basically at the moment even even to the point of bailing banks. I don't know what what um, John Maynard Keynes would have thought of the extreme nature of what what Gordon Brown did and then what the Federal Reserve did as well in America following Gordon Brown in his actions um, and then of course we had the Iraq War. You know before that we had the Iraq War which was a huge cost. So. The government throughout history has always had the printing press and has always had plans in spending the money and people who like you or like me would pay for it. So you do you feel that that in it would have continued do you, do you, had had Nakamoto not produced the Bitcoin? Do you think it would have just been business as usual? Yeah, absolutely, that, that, that would have been the case um, without benefit of that. Um, you know, change is a uh, 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 wind that's always um, 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 
that always takes people by surprise. Yeah. And and that's exactly what's happened, you see. Um, so these cryptocurrency um, um, uh, um, adoption now it's it becoming uh, a headache for the government because they didn't see it coming. Um, it's a wind of change that um, they didn't see it coming at all, and uh, and they and uh, and when they 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 were informed about it, they they took it for granted. Actually, they thought it just you know it wasn't gonna hold water. So um, I think I think. It's a good thing that we've got um, the, big, the blockchain and uh, cryptocurrency you know, in the space right now, and we because again, like I said, I can't stop talking about how technology has played its part in this. The internet has created this, has made it possible for this, um, for the recognition of cryptocurrency and the uh, and the and the popular adoption of cryptocurrency as we, mm. as we stand right now. Yeah, I think the internet was a engineering idea which was just off net. And it's only when the entrepreneurs started to realise this, they potentially could create a product. They could actually use their money, use their investment, use their capital, get VCs, venture capitalism, into the internet. Because it's no good, I mean, there are ideas and blueprints all over the world. But people don't adopt them you know, right now, we all know the um, blueprint for many different technological ideas. But many countries all over the world do not adopt these ideas. And they've got the papers. They go on the internet. One Google search for how to make a nuclear power plant. It's there. If you really want to make it, you can get the information. It's not a question of the technological information. It's not a question of a constitution. That information is readily available to the whole wide world. It's a question of capital because if it was just a question of technological innovation, they would already have that technology because it's there. The papers are in front of them. The difference is, as you know, it's about money. They haven't got the money to implement. They need entrepreneurs. They need people who are prepared to take a risk, who are prepared to go out, get VCs behind them, get the backing behind them and say, look, I have this great idea for a Facebook, for a Google, for a this, for a Yahoo. And they need the money. And that's the difference, and that's the why America, I think, has led on the front of having the money. What's your views, Eddie, on the government going back to the gold standard? Oh, and that's impossible, I suspect, um, because... Um, would you... What are your views on that? It's impossible. They will not be able to do that. Um, it, it is impossible. Of course it's impossible, because... Well, I don't know whether it's impossible, because... It is impossible. It is possible, because, because, but... Uh, you, you know what the situation... When was the last time you, you, you did shopping, you know, with... Uh, we um fiat currency um this day and age we mostly shop with our credit cards you know we, we've been using digital money no it's not, no, it's not i don't think it's a question of implementation nobody would be carrying gold around with them they would producing they would produce no, dollars no, 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 and pounds by, and, and gold, it would be backed by every know, every that. pound would be backed by I gold understand. But and the what, benefit what I'm would saying be is the idea of paper currency it's gone. It's history. But you know, paper currency, I think paper currency could be still used. I mean, like now, everyone it, stores it's their... It's pointless. I, 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 I can see the point. That's but what I'm saying. No, no, what I'm, what I'm saying is it doesn't matter if it's gold and it's digitalized. You can still have gold in a wallet digital, digitalized form. It's not that issue that's the concern. You can, have, you can have Bitcoin in paper. There's nothing stopping people having pieces of paper which represent bits of Bitcoin. It's still possible. There's nothing. It, it wouldn't be. No, well, it would still be no, Bitcoin. The question but is, it would be used as a paper. If people wanted paper, they could have it on paper. They could have it on wallet. They can have it on a computer. They can have it on the smartphone. They can have a piece of paper in their wallet that see, says this is Bitcoin representing. The point I'm trying to make is, I'll, I'll still bring you back to the point that we live in a digitalized world now. We cannot be carrying papers around. No, you know, I totally agree. No, no, I totally. Do, no, I totally. Agree. Uh, Eddie, I totally, know, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Well, I'm not talking about the technological aspect. I'm not talking about whether they use cashless society or whatever. We're going to make the assumption that it's a cashless society. That's fine. It but should the cashless society be backed by, should the government back it by gold? I don't think they, they, they can do that. I don't think that's going to be achievable right now. They wouldn't want it to be achievable. They, they, they don't want it because I think the distribution it's gonna of gold now... The, it's going to yeah, curb the their spending. Yeah, the distribution of gold now is... is, is um, I think, 
I think if we if we if we look deep, we we'll find out that maybe China or Russia have the most um, um, uh, accumulation of gold in, in the world. So yeah, and, just like, and yeah. that's not the seat of power. So so th that's kind yeah, of but that's only because the go only because the American and the British government had given up on gold. Yeah, so had they not? Because let's face it, at one point America still has a big gold reserve, but we all knew that Golden Brown, Golden Brown in this country sold gold in nineteen ninety uh, in. In, I think it was 1997 where he just sold a whole bunch of gold. Um, now, the, the question I'm trying to get at is that gold is exactly the same as Bitcoin. The purpose is the same. Both can be used in the same format because both could be cashless. Gold is... No, I mean, you, no, can't, you cannot you forge. Cannot, you cannot like, say gold like and you Bitcoin are the same. I mean... Gold is a physical commodity, and um, while Bitcoin is a digital commodity. Ah, but right? the physical, I agree, I can see what you're saying, but that's not irrelevant. That is irrelevant. Whether it's physical or whether it's um, not physical, it's irrelevant. When I have a piece of paper that says Bitcoin, 0 0.1 Bitcoin, and I buy a car from someone or buy a house from someone, I can give them that physical piece of paper. That physical piece of paper represents the Bitcoin. No. Whether it's no, it does. That piece of paper, even though it's got numbers on there and you need to put it in your wallet, it doesn't matter the representation of whether it's a physical hard lump of yellow metal in my hand or whether it's a piece of paper that represents that matter. lump. It doesn't matter. The difference between the two is the is the is the, is the possibility of manipulation. You know, can you manipulate gold? gold. How? That's okay. what you. That's the point. But you can't manipulate right. gold. So that's the thing. You see, you can. You, but you can manipulate um, Bitcoin. You can't. No, you can't. Paper. No, you can't. Um, no, you, you can't. No, you can't. No, piece of paper. No, no, because. Uh, but no, 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 no. If you've got your Bitcoin on a piece of paper, it's secured in the sense that it's got your security wallet. It's got your attachment. That gold, that Bitcoin has. That's a techn technological issue. I don't think that's what the concern. I'm talking about the fundamental aspects, the core aspects of bitcoin and the fundamental core aspect whether it's done on a piece of paper or on a laptop or whether it's done on a phone is no, irrelevant no, wait, wait you want to address it um bitcoin as you know being based on blockchain yes no that is not money you cannot manipulate that you can't well, if you say you just want to transfer bitcoin into paper money like make it Look like paper money. I'm a crazy. coupon, or it's a case. coupon. Well, but, but, yeah, there's nothing that stopping way. that from happening. There's nothing. There's nobody stopping. There's nothing stopping what? anyone from an entrepreneur saying, you know, something. I would like to make Bitcoin into a paper certificate. I'd like to offer people certificates in Bitcoin, and those certificates are representing that Bitcoin. Do, now, someone can either cash it in or not. The question you've got to ask yourself: Why do you need to do that? No, you don't need to do that. I'm not saying this no, is what no, I think. Yeah. I'm not. No, no. I'm saying. Whether you do, okay, forget the certificates, forget the paper, everything is cashless. And I tried to start the analogy by saying, look, let's talk about cashless, because we can totally eliminate the um, the, uh, the whole thing about, you know, there being paper, whether there's a need for paper or not. I don't think that's the issue. The point I'm trying to talk about, and I'm trying to just nail that point of gold, the core value of gold being a limited quantity of supply, you cannot produce gold out of thin air just like you cannot pre you cannot produce bitcoin out of thin air there are 21 million bitcoin there will never be any more bitcoin than 21 million bitcoin needs well, to be mined never it depends on the community they might decide to increase the well they may they may they may they may but as we know it's 21 million but i don't want to be talking about um you know straw arguments we're talking about the fact that there are 21 million bitcoin and there's going to be no more bitcoin has its value in the 21 million that's where the value comes from should they start to say they want to increase to 22 or 25 or 30 million bitcoin bitcoin will lose its value in a drastic way and somebody else will be a better store of value like you said it's a store of value gold somebody might find a mine in china and say oh i've just discovered a huge mine and now there's going to be more gold in circulation yes but the true fact holds with gold there's a limited supply of gold and there's a limited supply of bitcoin so i'm just trying to say fundamentally the two are exactly the same they both have a limited supply of quantity they can government cannot spend gold that it doesn't have just as the government couldn't spend bitcoin that it doesn't have 
And that's what stops the government from entering wars, spending people's money. They both serve the same purpose. Now, so therefore, on that basis, do you think that it should be such where the government should think about saying, OK, we made a mistake coming off the gold standard. Yes, we had the printing press and we behaved badly. But Bitcoin now has re made us realize we need to do we got, we've got to be honest again. If we don't, Bitcoin will take over. Because there's no way the government. How do they correct all the debt? The, 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 the debt. You know, you've got to balance. You, you don't forget uh, the the uh, the the economics of um, of um, of fiat currency uh, is based on you know a balance between your debt and your your uh, and supply you know of currency around the world. The, the dollar, um, American is in how many trillion debt? Um, but that uh, debt doesn't yeah. matter with when you're on fiat currency. That debt does that, matter. That does affect the value of the of the. Dollar. Of course it does. No, so, so it does. You've got exactly. To out with the supply of goods. But it's more. How on earth are you gonna? Exactly. Exactly. So, so it's that, a bit like it's, it's exactly. It's a bit like someone saying who's heavily in debt. Exactly. And this, but this is the problem. That's the problem. That, yeah. And that's the that is the problem where you've said okay, well, okay. Let's say for an example that the government decided to say okay, we're gonna have to sort our act out. We cannot behave like alcoholics. We cannot keep drinking alcohol. We need to think about the fact that we have a problem drinking. If we were to sober today and go on the gold standard, then we have got to wake up to this huge debt that we've created, the huge spending spree. They have to own up to it. They have to say, yeah, we are in shit. And you're saying they're never going to acknowledge the fact that they are in shit. And they don't have to as long as they continue to drink alcohol, as long as they continue to own the printing press. You know, they never have to. They can always refinance the debt with printing more money, printing more money, continue drinking. It's like an alcoholic. As long as they continue to drink and continue to behave like that, they don't need to address the issue. But like you said, the day they stop and the day they come off the print, remove the printing press and go back to gold is the day they have to think about what the fuck we've done, you know? That's the problem. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting um, um, to look back and, and you know... Um, but the thing is, we can't own gold. That's the thing. You, see. you and me couldn't afford to own gold. But technically, and the government knew that. The government knew that the physical, because the best thing would be gold. If there was no such thing as Bitcoin, what Bitcoin is copying is gold. That's all Bitcoin is trying to do. It's trying to say, can I create a gold and give it the same quant quality and, quant and give it the same characteristics of gold, which means you can't fudge it. You can't forge it. You can't. You can't double spend. You can't double spend two pieces of gold. That was what was needed, and what Bitcoin managed to do is create an artificial gold. It's created that because now it's created something which has the characteristics of gold. So that's the beauty of what it's been able to do, and now we have this at our fingertips. You know, who's to say we we could have had gold, but it's just outside of our reach. And I think Bitcoin will be outside of everyone's reach soon as well, but it's still going to be able to be a good. So do you, do, you, do you see that the qualities of gold and Bitcoin, how they fundamentally are one and another? You're right in that sense. Um, they are quite similar in that sense uh, of scarcity and, uh, and, uh, and value. And not copyable, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think... Um, We've come to a point where everyone will start to slowly realize this uh, importance of um, Bitcoin. Uh, but it's going to take time, just like the internet did. Um, I, I, I knew how long it took me to go through my first email, you know. Um, everyone was skeptic, you know. But right now, I know a lot of companies will not deal with you if you don't have an email, really. Um, they do their business through email. So, um, so I think with time, people will start to adopt this. And again, you know, technology is... It, it's got a big role to play in this, you know, and, and us always played uh, a big role in this uh, adoption. And with, as we move along, um, every single man and woman on earth would be uh, in possession of a smartphone, and, and, and that is the facility you need. There will be your own bank, there will be your own, you know, uh, wallet, and you would then do whatever transaction you wish to do, you know, from such devices, so on. Well, um, it's um, it's a question of time, really. Mm. Um, and when? I think very soon. 
uh, we'll see this mass adoption and people will start to um, realize the full potential of it. But um, the, the ones that need to be worried, the government and the uh, big business uh, that's been um, relying on government imprisoning uh, the masses, you know, with their uh, policies and uh, um, on, on, on market behaviors, you know. So I think um, the point is cut, the, the time has come where. I think big business, when big, big, big business behaves badly, is when it gets into bed with government. That's the they're only followers, time. They follow us. Not all, but those that do yeah. are the ones that behave. And you're right, it's, it's, a, it's called corporate benefits. Exactly. It's so. called. What do you feel, Eddie? Another question I wanted to ask you. How do you feel now that we have, which F.A. Hayek once said, of we need a world of competing currencies? Because before Bitcoin, there really wasn't competing currencies. Like, in this country, you had to spend the pound. You couldn't say, oh, I decide today to spend um, this currency because it's, it's quality and quantity of store of value is better, or this currency or that currency. And the better currency rises to the top. How do you feel now that what F.A. Hayek once suggested theoretically would be better for us, we actually now have? Which is competing currencies. That's what, well, competition brings about um, quality, you know, in any industry uh, across the spec. Um, and what does quality mean in that sense of um, uh, cryptocurrency? What's quality for you in a in a cryptocurrency? Quality will will will, 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 will translate into um, currency stability and. Uh, um, 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 Value, um, the monetary value, uh, in terms and of utility the, factor. Do you think, uh, like, like smart contracts and things that, exactly. it's like Ethereum. Ethereum yeah. can do. Yeah, so and yeah. EOS, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, the the point of quality, um, um, in cryptocurrency will will will, will translate into um, yeah, you know, the fact that Bitcoin would would know that they can uh, just increase the supply that would be watering or uh, diluting the quality of Bitcoin so do you think uh, and, and for that reason they know Ethereum is sitting around the corner to take that position so do you think you know, the spot position. quality would be mass adoption people actually seeing the value actually saying you know something I want to own Ethereum I want to own Bitcoin and then when you see more and more people seeing the use factor saying ah smart contracts EOS is doing this and Bitcoin is doing. Bitcoin is just Bitcoin, and it's storing the value, and it's does do these transaction confirmations and all this. So each coin is starting to stake out its unique selling position. One is, of course, in its name. It's saying, "Look, we are not Ethereum. We are EOS." And then it's about saying, "Okay, we are EOS because this is what we can do as EOS." And then they want the Joe public out there to buy EOS. That would be competing currencies, and the only reason Joe Public would want to buy EOS, you know, why? But why would anybody? Why would Joe Public buy EOS instead of Ethereum, or buy Ethereum instead of Bitcoin, or buy Dogecoin, or buy, you know, Ripple? They're all different, and they're all competing, and they all want to have the Joe Public out there saying, "What have you got in your wallet?" Oh. Um. It's um, I think I'm gonna relate um, uh, the crypto um, I'm gonna relate the crypto industry um, as opposed to um, a, a, a mining industry. Um, now what's what what's what's been happening um for centuries um for centuries you know with the government and the masses is the government has been mining the masses. And they've been mining us and forcing, telling us what we can and can't. Well, buy. When I say mine, is we haven't had the choice. Been, yeah, they haven't given us the choice. And everything and haven't given and us sucking, any choice. Sucking up everything, and um, and the masses are just living on. Uh, on uh, of what's being fed them? You know, well, exactly. So, so now it's come to a point where there's nothing. You more have to choice. Mine. You have choice. There's nothing more to mine, uh, or it, the, the the ground is you know empty, and then and the government you stepped out the picture. Or you destroy the the, the, the mining exactly video, or, the yeah. difference is choice I totally yeah. agree before the American citizen what currency could the American citizen citizen own before Bitcoin oh, dollar that's it 
You must have the dollar. And if you had anything else, you didn't going to get you anywhere. But now we have choice. And this is unique. How? What's your views on that, Eddie? The fact that you're now free to choose. Well, I think that's one thing the government don't, don't want. The freedom to, of choice, you know. And uh, you know what that means? That, that empowers an individual when you give them the freedom to choose what they want to do with their um, work <laughs> or, or, or um, you know, money. So um, for that reason, I can see the quality of life, you know, improving from this point on because we will be able to choose where we live, where we work. And how, how, would, it, how would that help a country like, let me just pick a country like Venezuela? How could, how could this idea have been free to choose because they use the peso, I believe, at the moment, the Venezuelan peso. Or is it the peso that they use in Venezuela, I think? They just released the petrol. The petro, petro, that's right. And then having... Petro... Yeah. Something. Backed by oil, apparently. Petro, petro, petro. But how would it affect... I mean, we all know that Hugo Hugo Chavez was the previous one. Yeah. Who is the person now? Maduro. Well, Maduro. Maduro. How do you think Maduro feels now that... When it was Hugo Chavez's time, there was the currency of Venezuela. There was no other way for the people but to have a currency which was literally going that way. And you couldn't... Well, the currency wasn't going that way. The inflation was going that way. But the value of the currency was going that way. You couldn't even buy a loaf of bread right now with their currency. People in Venezuela right now are literally in droves trying their best to leave the country. Because they're starving in Venezuela. What benefits do you think it brings to them now, them having the freedom to choose how to how to sell their labour? So when they go to work, they are saying, we don't want to be paid in our Venezuelan currency. We'd rather be paid in Bitcoin or some other coin. How does that change the life of a Venezuelan? I mean, it's going to be a gradual process, but... Um it can only change their life for, for good, uh, for, for better. Um, because uh, there's one thing um, you cannot do uh, in the space of um, cryptocurrencies, which will, will address uh, the blockchain um, era. Um, the blockchain, the most important part of the blockchain is the transparency it brings. And that is just going to erode corruption don't forget, most of these countries you, you're talking about discussing today, it, it, uh, uh, like uh, Venezuela, it's um, been engulfed with corruption, um, an oil-rich nation. And we can talk of many countries, people, many people, countries. People eating from the from from, from the from, you know, from the bean. Mm. Um, so it's all boils down to corruption and um, and control and, and control. You and know, no freedom. Uh, exactly, yeah. Exactly. No lack of freedom. So. Um, the, the one thing the blockchain is going to do is to, when there's transparency, then you've got a problem. And Corrupt, trust, corruption. trust. Yeah. yeah, transparency and trust, then corruption has got a problem because they can't strike in that And that's competing. Corruption will still, the, 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 Venezuelan, the Venezuelan dollar will still exist, but it's going to have to now compete. And that's something where the Venezuelan dollar has never, ever, ever it's had a monopoly. The Venezuelan dollar has always had a monopoly on its people there was no other currency allowed in venezuela there's no other currency allowed in most of these south american countries like cuba there is no other currency but that but something's happening and people are now starting to realize that they can actually have something different and they can say we don't want this shit anymore we'd rather how easy is it for someone to send someone you know for a web developer any developer, how easy it now to say, actually, I, don't, I want Bitcoin. And the freedom is really going to make a difference to these people. Yeah, um, I, in the sense of, um, of freedom, um, like I said, looking at the area of, um, of, of the choice, um, the freedom of choice, and uh, also relating to transparency, um, it's just going to only improve, you know, um, the the um, standard of living for everyone across the globe, as long as you're willing to um, um, contribute, you know, to it, to whichever society you're but is, it, is it creating a new system? Because, of course, there's the original system 
which is based around the currency of the um, government, where everything is based around that. But the employer has probably realised that actually the currency has no value. I can't employ people. I can't buy anything because I'm having to be in a situation like, there's nothing to buy. So the after effects of the fact that nobody's prepared to even grow anything because they know what's the point of me growing if I can't even buy the seeds to grow anything with. It's a re you have they really if you if you realize how dire the situation actually is when you only have the world currency and that currency is totally destroyed by the government and this is the same government in America in in, in the UK we're just slightly less down the road in the sense that we managed to keep it afloat because of the debt issue. Venezuela has done exactly the same, but the fact is their debt is so big and nobody's going to borrow them to pay it off. They're in a situation where they're having to inflate. So when the country is so poor, and they don't need to, this is the thing, they do not need to be like this, do they? No, they don't. Nobody needs to be in that They have to be in that situation because the country's put them in that situation, but it's a sad shame knowing that you can't help these people. It's the, it's the, it's the, the, Bitcoin can help these people. The government has screwed them into the situation. I think like the, North Korea. I think the one thing now, uh, uh, the bit, uh, the cryptocurrency is going to change a massive, that's going uh, to contribute massively to the world is that issue of uniformity as, uh, um, and stability across every nation once mass yes, adoption takes Exactly. Place. Because it would not matter where you, you, the, the economy of your country, you know, in terms of how much worth you are at the time. Well, it will, why? it will, because why? it will, because the government cannot then behave badly. Because we're talking about governments behaving badly, and the only way governments behave badly is if they're on the printing press. And everybody, everybody uses the money of the government. The day the people turn their backs on the issued money by the government is the day the government really loses its control over everything. Yeah, um, the point I'm trying to make is, um, if you have a situation where the um, the economy, you know, is about to go down, you know, in some sense, and you, for instance, you got your wealth, your millionaire in Bitcoin, it's not going to affect you in a, uh, in a massive, drastic way, apart from the fact that you probably will not economically will not be productive from that point on. Why is that? What do you mean by that? Well, well because you probably, well, if you own a business, it, well, and if your economy goes down, your productivity goes down. That's oh, the business mean. productivity, yeah, but yeah, the Bitcoin yeah. part. But, but, but the Bitcoin part, that's what I'm saying. From that point on, where the, your economy starts to experience, you know, um, um, age, um, problems, um, you will not um, suffer. Um, um, because there might be a flight to quality. Because, yeah, because you would have your... You would have your 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 wealth stored in in a stable in a standard um, uh, international standard currency, yes. whatever it may be, you know. But imagine some people in Venezuela having their money or being millionaires in in whatever currency they had at the time the economy went down. They would have gone down with with with, with the economy that's as well. The, that, that, that's, so that's the risk. That is the big risk, and that is the one thing Bitcoin. Um, would change. Will and protect. Will protect, mm. and, and it will make people and government realize that you know, if you're going down, you're going down your home, you know, and, and most people and the, the, the masses might not be going down. And the home. beauty is as well, if if you if that millionaire person or any person decides to leave Venezuela, they can and leave the, Venezuela in the same, you know, um, world they had, you know, before the the crash, and and it could be anywhere in the world, and you know. Uh, and enjoy their, their money, you know, uh, or restart their business, you know. So I think that's the beauty of um, of cryptocurrency, really, because it, it will make, it will break in every government across the globe to say, you know what, the people have chosen, people have chosen, decided. They've decided, yes. and they are almost untouchable <laughs> yes. in terms of, yes. you know, economic disaster. So if you go down, you go down your own. Yes, you know? exactly. So, so exactly. you know, it, it's, it could be as simple as that. But you can imagine, um, every time you got a uh, crisis coming, an uh, economic crisis coming in the country, uh, and people fear, you know, they start to um, rush for gold or um, other hard currencies, you know. Well, if you had it in in in, uh, in Bitcoin, 
It would not matter what happened to him. No. Is this the future we're talking about, Eddie? I mean, when do you reckon? Because, as you know, the world right now, we're in a transitional period where the government just does not accept any, you know, the government clearly hates Bitcoin. Change. Yeah, it does, hates Bitcoin. It's never going to... We've just talked about a future, yeah. a world which literally carves out government. It really means that there is no space for government. It's going to cut them out of the picture exactly like a heart operation, like cancer operation. It's literally going to eat at the cancer, which is the government, and remove it. This, for the cancer, is bad news. You know, it's really losing its slip. The, the mafia, the protectionist racket that they're running, is now, in a sense, of being in jeopardy. So, I, I, have, to, I, have, to, I have to say, um, one thing people need to start to do in recent time now is to start to pay attention to technology the technological changes that's happening around us and it will open your eyes to a lot of um, possibilities um, things that you never dreamt of um, now as we speak we, 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 you know scientists are working on AI and also um, 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 quantum computing yeah, but again, I mean, scientists are working on that, but it's the well, entrepreneurs that bring these things. It's the capitalists, yeah. the people with the money, who bring this actually to the people. Like Bitcoin. Bitcoin could have easily just been a blueprint on a piece of paper. It's only because people started to put their own hard capital into Bitcoin that started to create some... Uh, well, I wouldn't um, say that's uh, entirely the case, because don't forget, if you ask... At least one in ten of the new uh, of the first adopters of um, Bitcoin, how they ever heard about Bitcoin? Most of them would say, "I just went online and searched for it and I saw it." Exactly. Like, la, la, but to, uh, exactly. Dan Larimer, that's exactly what he said. He said, "You know, I just I just searched um, online and, and I found." I was looking yeah. for crypto. Hey, you can find yeah, it's so like, yeah, but that's, no, but that, that, but that's not. Off. Yeah, but that's what not that's part of the entrepreneurial process. The entrepreneurial process is first of all, like Roger Ver, you have to spot alert, you have to be alert to the opportunity. And then when you're alert to the opportunity, then you have to then have the capital, either my, someone's capital or your own point capital. Is, my point is the means of the opportunity. What is the means of the opportunity? And the, the means as we speak is technology. Without the internet, I can assure you. That yeah, but again, far, far, far I know, I agree, behind, but we're taking, you know? no, but again, when we talk about the internet, we're taking a lot for granted. Who created the internet? How was the internet created? What about all the unseen VCs who have put all their money into bringing what the internet is today? If the internet had still been what it was in the scientist laboratory, it would be unusable, unrecognisable to what we have today. The user interfaces, the search engines. All these things are literally the VCs putting their money into it, pumping it. Like now, a perfect example is EOS. EOS has $2 billion investment. That's EOS. That billions of dollars is the reason why they've got so many developers now working. How, you just tell me now how many developers EOS have got, and they are not going to be working there for free. Well, they've, got, they've got massive, you know. And that's, looking at the codes um, they've been writing in the last 90 days, uh, I mean, it's humongous. That's um, capital investment. Yeah, true. Uh, um, no, no, no um, question about it. Um, but my point here is, technology has made this possible in lightning speed, um, and and that's what we're going to continue to see. So it's not. I can I can guarantee you that it's not up to the government to decide. When this happens, it's not. It's, it's I totally agree. I totally agree. And this is what, but the government the does not want and this to happen. And if you look at the countries where it's really progressing forward now, it's only now being adopted by poor countries because there's money coming into it and they've seen the potential. But more, most of the places where it's really been taken, it starts in America. That's where this originated from, you know, and it's from America. With its most things come from America. You know, most things start off like Silicon Valley, even though the idea of the internet started off technologically someplace in the UK, 
and we could even go back towards the Turing devices and stuff. But that's what they were. It's only when the Silicon Valley started and started the VCs and all started to put the money together. But I think where the internet failed, where the internet failed uh, was the centralised approach. That's the one thing the governments felt safe with, with the internet. Don't you think? I think that was, the, that was a, a safe way of um, bringing it to the people. Could you imagine if the first... Um, 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 protocol of the internet was this. Well, it was. Well, no, it was. Though, wasn't it? it was a deal. That well, was the idea. The original well, idea was a well, decentralized. It was all these different nodes which couldn't be controlled. But it never turned out like that. But you see, the problem with that is people are lazy to 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 you know to do stuff. You know, um, to put time in, and you know, and how many people can go and mm. you know um, engage themselves in a decentralized system? I don't think many people can. So the internet wasn't designed to do the same. Yeah. So where the internet a, a, failed, a I think the bit, where the internet failed, I think the bi internet, the Bitcoin blockchain. and Ethereum is internet 2.0 or 3.0. It wow. the Bitcoin and Ethereum are really going to do what internet didn't. And I hear this all the time, but it is true. You know, there's not going to be on the blockchain a a a you, place you, where the government say can that, say we can manipulate people. But you say people. that, as we speak, um, can you, what could you do on Ethereum blockchain as an individual, you know, if you're not a, a, a developer? Well, you does, well, if you think about you, it, you, you no, no, be able to do it much is, No, it is, you can. It's about the security. Once a smart contract has been created. Yeah, someone has to create that. Contract. Yes, once a smart contract has been created. No, and the thing is, nobody's nobody's barred from creating a smart contract you could create a smart contract right now on the ethereum blockchain nothing stopping you from doing nothing stopping me from doing in that smart contract we could put whatever we wanted to and we could make that smart contract smart contract very solid and it would sit there on the blockchain and nobody could have a hoot about it now if you were to create a post on facebook and you were to say i think mark zuckerberg is a fool which he actually is a fool, but let's say you were a democratic fool, and let's say you were to say that, Mark Zuckerberg could say, actually, you know something, Eddie? I don't like that comment. And he could delete that comment and ban you from Facebook. But my, con my concern about um, um, the smart contract is, what happens when somebody, you know, creates a smart contract uh, with a false um, statement or false um, description of uh, events? Is that going to remain on the blockchain? Yes, it is. Exactly. And so how you is that going to help but you cannot have, intellectual, yes. you know... Um, uh, but you cannot have freedom. But you cannot have freedom your own way. Freedom is what freedom is. Freedom is allowing people so, to do but things which you don't like, as well as things you, you do like. But can you see the danger there now? So you start to have um, uh, fake news and um, fake... Uh, false information, false. It's not a policy. danger. It's not a danger to me. It's a danger because it's not a lot of people will fall. Yeah, fall for that. but that's so. life. That's but that is freedom. That's freedom. We've never experienced that before. Freedom should be the ability for someone to say, you know, something. I'm going to put this out there, whether it's not true or true. It's not. That's fine. But hopefully, we're going to realise quality will rise. Those people out there will realise this is quality. This is not quality. But I'm not talking about whether we have applications to discern whether what's quality and what isn't quality. The point I'm trying to talk about is individual freedom. If you say to me, Eddie, that individual freedom means people putting things out there, which is fake news, then you need a controller. Then you need someone to muzzle people. Then you need everything to be checked. You need a big brother. You need someone to say to Eddie, Eddie, before you um, issue your smart contract, let me just have a look at that smart contract first because I don't. I want to make sure it's not fake news. Sh sh and then you've got this narrative where the government says, "Wait a second, Eddie, you're questioning the government. You're questioning the government. I have now decided what you're producing is fake news, and now we are going to shut you up for that purpose. That's the only thing, Eddie. If you want a solution to the problem you're suggesting, which is this problem about what if people produce fake news? Then you need a then you need a big brother. Then you need someone who audits every smart contract, and that person who's auditing the smart contracts 
will only have his own agenda at mind. It could be somebody who's a Sunni, doesn't like the Shiites, and says everything that is Sunni produced is good. Anything that Shiite produced is bad. It's fake news. That's the problem you have, Eddie, when you think about censorship. Once you go down that road of having a big brother, you're taking people's freedom away. You're then removing and you're giving someone the power to decide, is it these people who are good people? Are these people fake news people? Then fine, we will censor these. And that's exactly what Facebook is. That's the problem that everyone has, is the censorship. Is this thing about saying, who chooses what's fake news or what isn't fake news? You either have that, someone choosing and deciding, a big brother, or you say, you know something? There should be, and this is what Ethereum is, there should be no censorship. Let people decide what's good and what isn't bad. But the most important thing is people are free to choose. There is no big brother. You either have a big brother or you don't have a big brother. If you have a big brother, then we can control exactly what you're trying to say, Eddie, which is, what if someone creates fake news? You see? Yeah, well, makes sense, but um, it's still something to worry about uh, in the blockchain space. Um, how you would, you know... It's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's a problem. I think there's some entrepreneur out there. Some entrepreneur out there will actually say, you know, if it's a problem and people out there want a product, then they can find somebody who can, like a, like a, like a rating agency, you may decide to say, actually, I don't know the difference between what's fake and what's not fake. You may decide on a rating agent to say, if it's got a certificate that says this is trusted, then fine. But that's up to you, whether you choose to have a rating agency to sit through your world and reduce it to what you want it to do. But when you talk about somebody who says this is for everyone, that's the problem. Shouldn't that be a way of creating a standard um, um, of... Um smart contract um, what do you mean content? by standard how would a standard be enforced Wait. who would enforce the standard what well, there's, there's an ICO there's, on what there's an ICO called um, the quantum stamp um, they audit um, smart contract hmm. um, you know I mean you don't you don't want to appoint one body like that 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 would make them like government really because they, they have, they've got a part to choose who to not really not really not really if someone subscribes to it, this is the difference. If someone okay, subscribes um, to it, then that's fine. But it, like you said, it shouldn't be the Ethereum blockchain shouldn't say, oh, we're going to now. Imp it's up to you. If you want this ICL company you've just suggested to give, you want their stamp of approval for everything you read, then you, as an individual, you can go down that road and you might help yourself. But it's not for Ethereum to say, actually, we are going to have this body ourselves and everything is going to go through this funnel. That is when things become dangerous because then you're creating power into one hand and centralizing everything, and that's the difference. But you're right, Eddie. I think with time, you know, these things will take shape exactly, um, um, and um, and we'll, you know, we'll start to uh, see quality and. Uh, that's exactly and, the case. But that's exactly the case. It's about quality, but quality shouldn't be controlled by a centralized source deciding what is quality, what isn't. Quality should rise to the top naturally through the evolutionary process of people saying, this is what we, this is trusted, this is new, it's not trusted. And people have to make, you know, people have to make some decisions in life. People have to actually now say, we still have been late, late, they, they can do whatever approach they want. But these choices, are, you know, buyers have to take the risk, some of these risks themselves. Like now on YouTube right now, there are many people shilling on YouTube right now. How can you tell the difference between a good shill and a bad shill? You have to make that decision. And it's great that YouTubers are saying, look, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving financial advice. This is what I'm suggesting. And each individual, like you, Eddie, like everyone else, now has to decide and say, you know something? I'm responsible for my own actions. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Um, it's um, it's going to be interesting, you know, going forward. To see how this all, all of this will play out. You know. It gets complicated in one way because it's not force-fed food. It, it, it's 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 the the whole thing is still new, relatively new, and um and as we move along, um as we go on forward, we will start to see changes and and and, and um and you know development in this space. So 
we'll, we'll see improvement really you know so i'm confident that you know we're doing the right thing the exactly right exactly it's, it's going to be the best thing that's ever happened to mankind you know and you know and you know why that will happen it will happen because customers are free to choose people are free to choose and as long as you have competition people are free to choose they will always say you know something this is how much i'm prepared to pay and this is the quality i want now ev not everyone's going to want the same level of quality some people will want less quality because it will be less pay some people will want more quality and pay more which is fine it's different things for everyone you may know more about the internet you may know more about Bitcoin and have more about Ethereum and say, actually, I can take it raw. Because, you know, I can tell the difference between shit and quality. You don't need a filter in between. But somebody who's a newbie who's just come into crypto may say, actually, I can't tell the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum. And they may say, I need someone to help me. And I'm prepared to pay a premium to have someone help me. Do you see different levels of expertise? Different levels of expertise mean people can see things differently. You may read a smart contract, you know, you may read a smart contract and say, you know something, that's rubbish because you've got experience and wisdom and knowledge for Bitcoin and Ethereum. But the next person next to you has never introduced himself to it. And therefore for him, he can't tell the difference between good and bad. So he may need some help, but that's for him to decide, not for someone else to make that decision for him. So, Eddie, listen, all I can say is, you know, if you got, I think it's been a good interview. I think we've, I'm glad that we covered the fundamentals. How do you feel about the fact that we covered? More, more, like, a, a di, more, more like a debate than <laughs> yeah. an interview. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I think, you know, these are questions um, that need to be addressed, you know, moving forward um, in the blockchain uh, space uh, as we move into a digitalized world. Um, so, as, as, we, as we go forward, we'll, we'll start to answer these questions and, and solutions will start to crop up. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking about all these you know, concerns we've raised um, in this um, discussion today. So um, I'm, in, uh, I'm intrigued. Uh, I'm looking forward to see you know, the, um, the, the changes that are going to occur as, you know, as things move forward. Uh, but, but I have no doubts that the blockchain has come to stay. Um, it's a technology that's got force behind it that is unstoppable really and, and that's what that's how i see it and i'm sure a lot of people will agree with me um no matter what um the government or whatever you know the powers try to do it, it's unstoppable really you know it's a change that is just gonna happen uh, in what shape and form it takes that's gonna remain to be our uh, answer so but we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens i think it's down to us to seize this opportunity and make the best use of it and uh, not let it play back into the hands of the government once again. So um, I think we have to be vigilant, not be carried away, um, because I see a lot of active men and women in this space um, being carried away by um, pumping and dumping, you know, uh, uh, rather than concentrating on the technology and how it's going to benefit you know, them and their fellow mankind. So, um, I think people want to be uh, with, with pumping and dumping is part of the process. You cannot it, remove it, that. It, 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 EOS can be pumped and dumped. It's just well, people buying and selling. That's always going to happen. I'm not, I'm EOS not saying, can be experiencing saying, that now. Yeah, it, it must be removed. All, all I'm saying is, it's taking away attention um, of 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 creating quality, you know, minds in the space. You see, what you want is you want people who are active. For the right reasons. You mean after not for financial mm -hmm. reasons? Pumping and dumping is financial, strictly financial. But that's how you know, everyone sorry, behaves financially. So, everyone so, behaves and, for financial and, means. And that's when you make mistakes and you let it play into the hands of the government. You see, that is. That is yeah, but they, no, the that government want the to, No, the government wants to get involved, is not using that as a, as an angle. But the, everyone but makes yeah, money. Yeah, everyone comes so into they, crypto. Yeah, the chance to do yeah that. everyone comes into crypto that. for greed. Every politician, and, and that's what every, you have to be aware of. You yeah. have to be wary of, you know, because greed leads to destruction. Can lead to destruction, but everyone wakes up in the morning to go to work and work hard for greed. You don't. Nobody goes to work and says, no, "I'm going to no, do it for I free." Say, I wouldn't say you wake up in the morning and go to work for greed. Why not? Yeah, because what is what is greed? Well, what is greed? But greed, greed is it's, it's wanting wanting to put food in, much. wanting to put food. No, not too much. No, no, no. no, no there's no, no guarantee. Everyone no, would love no, too much. 
Who wouldn't yeah. love too much? Who wouldn't love? Would you? Uh, no, you would love too much right now. If somebody said, look, there's a Lambo. You'd want a Lambo. You'd want a nice house. You'd want the world best right. for your family. Isn't that too no, much? That's, that's different from being greedy. I mean, greedy is... is that, a Lambo is not... Grab, just trying to grab... Um, um, Nobody's talking about who's grabbing. There's no There's no grabbing. There's no Grabbing is taking what some doesn't belong to you from someone else. That's not greedy. That's theft. That's stealing. Theft. No, no, no. When I said grab, I've not finished my statement. Grabbing oh, oh, excessively, you know. What, no, how, how, no. Enough. let people grab excessively. What, what how can, how, did tell me, how can someone grab Bitcoin excessively? Wait, we're not talking about... Well, how are we talking about greed? Oh, any coin, any coin. How can, how can someone grab any coin excessively? Is what you've described as greed. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a um, determination and appetite to, you know, to continually find means of, you know, of um, grabbing, you know, these currencies. How? Know. How, though? How, how would they do that? Well, it, it, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Because what you're talking to me is someone... It's how is it bad? How is it bad? Because, someone wanted because, to... Well, you, I think you're digressing from the topic, you know. No, I'm asking greed, you... If greed, greed, basically, it's... You know, you, you know, you know what it is. Is you know, being wanting too much. What What does that mean? Wanting too much. Wanting what? What's wrong with wanting too much? What What is too much? What is too much? What is too much? Too much is what you cannot, you know, what you cannot um afford to spend. Afford to spend. Yeah. So what you're saying to me, wanting too much means no. But if you haven't got it, you're wanting. That means you haven't got it. How can you spend something you haven't got? No, well, they're getting it. How are they getting it? That's the point I'm trying to say. Well, they're pumping and dumping. Well, what no, do you, but how you do you pump? pump? Do you how, pump? No, but, do you pump once? Yeah, what you but how do you? No, you can't. You yeah, can't. Do you dump once? What you You can't. That's you what need. That's what I'm talking about. No, but you're talking about pumping, and to pump, you need something to pump with. That's what I'm talking about. You need about your capital, pump. so you're putting your money on the line. You're Why? taking a risk. Well, can I ask you a question? Why do people pump and dump? Because that's an individual's choice. Why does it's anyone not. buy a bit of property and go to auction and it's purchase the property not. Not. and then sell it the next day? No, it's not. People do, Eddie. Uh, people go wait, to wait. A... No, uh, yeah, I know people do, but I'm saying pumping and dumping. It's share greed. There's no two questions about that. Okay. So, so you're saying to me, someone buying, let's say for an example, someone bought X coin. Someone spent a million pounds on buying X coin, taking the risk themselves that there's no guarantees that somebody will buy it after them. Because if you're saying to me it automatically works, pumping and dumping, gen nobody does pumping and dumping without make, trying to make a profit. Now we all know many people who pump and dump lose money. Because for pumping and dumping to work, there needs to be someone else who's prepared to pay more for it, should that be the case. Yeah? Bitcoin has experienced many pumps and dumps. Ethereum has experienced many pumps and dumps. And all they've done is created liquidity into the marketplace. That's all a pump and dump does. It creates the liquidity. You, when you made money off proof of weak maths, you made your money. Had you sold at the top, it would have been money based on someone pumping that coin. Now, you could have got out a 400 ETH if you wanted to out that contract, but you didn't. But that was pumped up to 400 ETH. Is that a bad thing? No, it wasn't. People decided pumping and dumping. If you look at the facts of what pumping and dumping is, it's people buying and selling. Now, you're saying it's okay to buy one or two. That's not greedy. Buy one or two, but don't buy ten. If you buy ten, that's greedy. No. No, that's not greedy. Okay, but if you buy a hundred, that's greedy. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the act of, you know, trying to make profit uh, uh, at the expense of, you know, creating uh, chaos in the market. How does that happen? So the act of trying to make a profit by creating chaos in the market. How are they creating? It? How does so that that's that's greed? Well, the, the, the thing you have to look at is why do you acquire um, too much coin that you don't necessarily need? Um, you know, only for the short term, um, you know, just for the fact that you want to see the price rise by a fraction and then quickly uh, take out a profit. Um, 
you see, this is the habit um, I'm worried about. Um, the short term uh, uh, purchase and, and, and sales of, of, of cryptos. Um, so should we remove that? Is that what you're saying? Should be removed? Well, you could, that cannot be removed. It can't be removed. Well, and think, it shouldn't I be think, removed because that creates the liquidity. people need to be educated about it because what that's going to do is going to it's going to damage the industry. Uh, it's going to all slow the by people or buying short term or slow the progress of the industry. Mm. I would I would rather prefer that people um, buy for the, for the reason of the trust they have in the technology and. You know, and and with the hope of you know making good profit. Eddie, well. but you also and agree. Not, yeah. But with a decent time. You, you also know? agree in the marketplace. There are many participants. There are many participants in the marketplace. Some people hold short term. Some people hold long term. Now, what you're saying to me is you have a problem with those participants who hold short term. Absolutely. Um, it, it's um, it's a it's a terrible attitude, you know, um, because uh, they're damaging the um the values of of some of these uh, projects really, you know, by their acts, you know, of pumping and dumping. Um, I mean, what would you think about um, the value of, say, let's let's take a, a commodity uh, and, and, and put it into um, the description, say, we take Mercedes. Um, so if you, if Mercedes releases the latest, um, let's say, C class or S class, and Everyone brushes and buy them up completely, and you know, and then the next day they throw them back into the market. What do you think that's gonna? How do you think that's gonna, you know, uh, affect the, okay. the, 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 the 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 um value of well look the, first the value, okay the, the so let's talk about this okay so C class we're talking about I'll pick one model C class McDonald say C class Mercedes so everybody on day one buys a C class McDonald's. Um, 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 buys a C-Class Mercedes. You have a question of supply and demand. So on day one, there's a huge demand. Not everybody. A certain selection Most of people. people a few buy people. More than they need. Okay, a few people yeah, decide to buy more than they need. One person. Let's just say one person. One per. One person decides and says, on Monday, I am going to buy every single C-Class Mercedes that's sellable. Yep. Yeah? I'm going to buy all the C-Class Mercedes that's sellable on that day. Well, then what's going to happen is he's going to buy one, two, three, four. And when he gets to 100 C-Class Mercedes, the price he pays for the 101 C-Class is not going to be the same as he pays for the 99. Because what he's doing, he's outstripping supply and creating much more demand. And therefore, the price will no longer be here. The price will go up. So he's now having to pay more for his C-class Mercedes than he did before, but as you said, he's going to continue well, buying. Crypto doesn't he's going to continue. Yeah, if you take, for example, when the ICO, the initial coin offering, takes place, the the, the prices are fixed. They are fixed. So but, if you if you want a million, but quantity, Ethereum, but quantity is fixed. ICO, but quantity you're not going to pay a different price for the first one and pay a different price ah, for the last one. But the quantity one isn't fixed. Order. No, but the quantity isn't fixed. The quantity is only set to a certain amount. Now, if the price is, let's say, for an example, one pound for one coin, the next question you got to ask is, how much is the quantity? So let's say the quantity was one million, and this person decides he wanted to buy all one million, then that's the end of the ICO. He's holding all one million of the coin. Good for him. And then when the ICO launches, but isn't that, but that's good. That's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly what one investor wants to buy all the shares out there. Let him buy all the shares out there. The question is, what's he going to do then? Is he going to sell them in the marketplace? And when he starts selling, the price is going to come back down again because he's going to have the control of the supply. Supply and demand and the price is the measurement, is the, is the um, ballast. That's the ballast which regulates the market price. When supply outstrips demand, the price drops. When demand outstrips supply, the price increases. Now, where you're saying is in an ICO where the price is fixed, well, then you have to take quantity into account. And if you've got the price which is fixed and someone buys all the quantity, then there will be all the quantity purchased. That's, that's a, then that's a wonderful ICO. That is a successful ICO. If you, every ICO launch out there wishes it could sell out super fast to one person. 
every ICL that I shill or want to talk about, every ICL that you talk about, Eddie, wants to sell out. He doesn't want to burn coins at the end or throw coins away or have an ICO that doesn't work. So what you're defining as greed to these ICOs is actually music to their ears. Having investors who want to buy more than they need is music, is ice cream. Eddie, if you was an ICO person launching, you would want people to buy more than they need. You would want people to be greedy. When you go to work, you want to earn more than you need. When you have a return on investment, you want more than you need. Why would you not? Yeah. There's well, nothing wrong with that. That's what creates the world. Ambition. Greed. It's what drives people forward, Eddie. This whole world is built on greed. It's built on someone wanting to put more in their stomach and feed their family and escape poverty, escape the conditions that they're in. Okay. Well, you see? And hopefully that... But what I'm trying to say is it's people... But the beauty of Bitcoin is people use Bitcoin even with some of the thinking that you've suggested today, Eddie, about saying greed is bad. Hopefully, and you're a person who uses, Bit, who uses EOS and Bitcoin, which is brilliant. And I think that's wonderful because that's what people need to be able to think about. Fundamentally, is greed good or bad? I think when a politician uses greed, when a politician like Hillary Clinton wants to be greedy and wants to climb up the ladder, what do you think of that? Well, um, well I think all politicians are greedy. If they're one politician, there's no greedy, I think. I think they're all the same. And, um, and they're greedy for power, and not for good use, obviously. So it's um, it's not. An, I don't think you can take that out of and separate greed and and uh, politics. Politics and greed go hand in hand, and the hunger for power. And what about in heaven? Do you think there'll be greed in heaven? Heaven. Well, that's religious. I mean, you can't. You know, you know. You, so have you been to heaven? <laughs> you know, if you haven't been to, been to heaven, then, uh, then we can't discuss heaven. Because, you know, Will no people want to be greedy in heaven? Like in heaven. Well, nobody knows what, what it's like in heaven. But from my understanding, heaven is going to be a place of perfection. So in that case, there should be no greed in existence in heaven. And then people have everything they want. Well, that, that's the hope. That's the, that's the, that's the promise. That everything will be nice They'll have a, um, interesting interest. So they'll, they'll, there won't be any need for greed. So they'll be very satisfied in their lives. And they will go about their day. Well, if you want to talk religious, then um, you have to understand that heaven is spiritual. And, and spiritual is different from physical. So, um, you will be a spiritual being in heaven. Yeah, you will be a spiritual being. So when you die, you should go into heaven or heaven. And you don't take your body to heaven or hell. So interesting. So you'll be a spirit. A spirit. Yeah, you'll be a spirit. So so how do you feel spirit. about being a spirit? Oh uh, well, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a spirit. Do you like but the idea I, of it? I, I I can feel a spirit within me, but. Um, a soul is spirit, a spirit, I don't Do you like don't the idea? Do you like the, do you look forward to being a spirit? Yeah, well, you're telling me if I look forward to dying. <laughs> yeah? My time is not done yet. So. And will there be a, will there be a, will there be like a God, like a government in, 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 because God is very similar to government. Do you think there'll be a one person who will say, well, I, I will you be able to do, will you be able to look at, I, I might have to, Educate your mind on, on Please do. Thing. You, you, you're demonstrating a bit of uh, ignorance. No, I would like there, to know. There, no, exactly, no exactly. Government. Exactly. No, there's no government. Um, but there will uh, be a regulator. Well, everyone is going to be automatic automation. Uh, everything is going to happen automatically. There's no room for um, evil or the unexpected but what if someone wants to be what if someone wants, to be that what way. if someone in let's say for an example someone has an urge an urge to want to do something in heaven 
Like, I don't know, maybe do a bit of gambling, a bit oh. of pornography. What if they wanted to do something like that? A natural instinct, a natural desire. We all do it now. We have an urge to do things that are voices. If we're going to heaven, it's a transformation. Uh, you must understand that, first of all. So, and once you've been transformed, that's the end. Of like the a story. transplant you, of some sort. You, you would not be... I don't know what shape it would take, but... I but what if you don't want to be transformed? What if you don't want... You like your voices. You like having a cigar. You like smoking a cigarette. You like taking a bit of drink. Then you should be in hell with Satan. Oh, oh, okay, it sounds much better, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. You so, okay, so I can do that. Go. So I can do that in hell. I can smoke in the big cigar. So all the voices I can do in hell, but I cannot do the voices in heaven. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Satan will be. But I cannot pay for to light up your cigar. Okay. In hell. But what if that doesn't? But that sounds a bit like. It sounds like very people enjoy enjoy hell. Some of these voices. People enjoy having these voices right now. Well, that's your body. Again, you, you're mistaking these things, you know. Um, uh, you, need to once spirit, had, you need to be spiritual. Once you've, had a, tra- once you've had a transformation. Uh, 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 so what you're saying is, once uh, you've had a transformation, a head, a brain transplant, then... It's not a brain transplant. It's, it's, it's it's, the transformation is from, transformation. The, from your body to a spiritual level. And everyone, which, everyone will be transformed like this. Which is completely different. Our spirit is different yeah. from our body. So everyone who goes up there will be very good. Will be good, good, goody, goody two shoes. Well, if you make it to heaven, yeah. I suppose that's what it is. You'll be very good. Yes. If you can make it to yeah. heaven. Um, but if you're in hell, you could do whatever you like. So it's a bit like being a part of a Quaker Institute or something where everyone is really good. Like the, <laughs> like the um, what's that society called? The um, Who are they called? These people in Americans. They have their own little place of living and they'll call each other. The... Um, Not the Quakers. No, the um, Amish. Uh, ha- Amish, yeah. Amish, that yes. sounds to me like heaven. Amish, that seems to me like the closest description of what you're saying to me heaven looks like. Um, no, those people are still living in. They flesh. are still living here, but they're, they're behaving. They're behaving as if they are good. They're prepping themselves for heaven. Yeah, they're prepping but themselves. They're... Right. But most people don't want to be part of like the Amish community. Most people look at the Amish community as weirdos. Oh, oh. one second. One second. We're gonna. Wish we end the interview here. Talk Absolutely. to someone. Yeah. All right. It's been lovely talking to you guys. I hope. Hey, do you want to come in and say hello? Hello. Come on then. Come on then, son. Come and say hello. We're having an interview. Okay, we'll stop it then. Okay, then see you later, guys. Have a good one, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye. Hey, good one, son. He said, "Do you want to?" Okay, bye. Do you want to say bye, son? Okay. Bye.